I want to um, just briefly summarize that uh, I had this horrific disease and uh, nothing seemed to help. I ended up on, on significant pain medication. And uh, one evening, alone in my truck, facing the setting sun, I died. And uh, it was at this point that the truly incredible part of my journey began. And so I'd like to share with you the feeling of dying. I think since the beginning of time, since we crawl, literally crawl out of caves, mankind has feared the unknown. What lies beyond the darkness? What is out there? What dreadful or wonderful thing awaits us? I now know what awaits us. And it can be dreadful, but if you have the spirit of Christ in you, it is wonderful. You see, I speak of the wonders and the beauty of heaven. But I was also given a glimpse of the alternative. I think that's how close I came to being taken into the darkness or accepted by the light. And that is the focus of my life to explain to you that just, yes, heaven is real, but so is hell. We've become blasé. How bad can hell be? I think that Hollywood has done a good job of desensitizing us to the formidable presence of hell. It's not an hour and 40 minute movie. It is eternity in darkness, in dread, in fear. So as I fell forward on the steering wheel of my truck and I cried out the first three of those six words that I feel along with the prayers of Lorraine and my family are responsible for me being here, I cried out, God forgive me. Fell forward and I was gone. I'm not sure how long I was out at that time, but I remember sitting back up and I knew time had passed because the sun, the setting sun was even lower on the horizon. And I sat up and I looked around and suddenly I thought, wow, I feel wonderful. I feel incredible. I am pain free. For the first time in years, I didn't have that dreaded pain with every motion of my body. It didn't hurt to blink anymore. In fact, I felt more alive than I'd ever felt in my life. Wow, I finally got it right. You have to take the whole bottle. I'm feeling so wonderful. I slide out of the truck. I walk about 15 feet away. I mean, I, I'm... I can hear the birds in the trees. It's a spring evening. I can smell the grass. I can see the setting sun and the blue sky. And I'm overwhelmed that I am pain free. For the first time in years, it doesn't hurt to think. It doesn't hurt to blink. And I'm just overwhelmed with relief. And then I turn and I look back at the truck. And I'm filled with rage and indignation because someone has had the audacity to get in my truck. Not only that, he's sleeping on my steering wheel. And I turn in my rage to go over there and yank him out and give him a good piece of my mind. Have you ever had a dream where you're trying to run and it's as though your feet are frozen in place? You can't move. And as I tried to move, I looked down and the strangest thing, I can see through my feet. But I thought, well, that's just the medication. But I, I'm trying to get toward the truck and I can only move in inches as in a bad dream. 
but I do manage to, to, to inch a little closer. And then I look up, and the body is slumped over the steering wheel. Its face is turned toward me. There's a tremendous amount of blood pouring from the mouth. I can't begin to tell you the momentous realization that the body I'm looking at in that truck is me. It is me. And yet I'm standing here feeling more alive than I had ever felt in my life. And I am absolutely dumbfounded, stupefied. How can this be? And then the realization strikes me that I have died. I've passed. And I'm filled with this panic that I've got to get over there. If I could just get over there and get back in my body, everything would be okay. But everything was not okay. And as I struggled to, to get back to the truck to get into my body, I remember noticing that, in fact, the truck door was closed. I didn't remember closing it. And it's locked from the inside. I had slid right through the door of the truck. And I'm standing looking at my dead body. And the feeling of panic spread through me. And as I struggled to comprehend what had just occurred, this momentous catastrophic moment, suddenly I began to rise off the ground. Now I'm an ex-pilot. I have a good judge of altitude. And suddenly I'm 100 feet. I'm 150 feet. I'm drifting slowly backward. I I'm drifting over the truck, but I'm rising at the same time. I can look down in the bed of the truck. I can see my toolbox. I can look through the rear window of the truck and see myself, my body, my dead body slumped over the steering wheel. And I am terrified. I'm beginning to pick up speed and suddenly I'm at 800 feet, 900 feet. I look out around. I can see the surrounding countryside. And when I got to about between 1,300, 1,500 feet, I tilted my head back. I look up at the sky, and there it was, this enormous golden circle like a wedding ring in the sky, about 60 feet in diameter, shimmering, the center filled with a golden light, and then the light swung inward revealing a tunnel. And how many times have you heard of the tunnel of light from people who have had near-death experiences? And as I'm gazing in wonderment and fear at this opening, and, and again, as a pilot, I'm a good judge of speed. I've, owned some, I've flown some fast aircraft and some fast cars. And suddenly, as though I was jet propelled, my body's just accelerates immediately, and I'm entering at tremendous speed into this tunnel of light. And it was as though the stars were streaming by me, and yet it was enclosed, but light was streaming by me. I mean, I, I, I know I was doing an excess of Mach 1. And yet the most amazing thing, typically when you have that sensation of speed, you have a sensation of wind in your face and in your hair, and you hear the rushing of the wind. Here I was traveling at the speed of God's light, not man's light, God's light, through this incredible tunnel of light, and yet no sound, no wind, absolute silence, and I am terrified. But in my terror, I've always been a guy that, that was very particular. I remember details uh, of, of, of just about everything I've ever experienced. I was a good pilot because I was detail-oriented. And although one part of me was terrified, there was an analytical part of me that was absorbing everything that was going on around me. And I could see it was like golden clouds inside, but they were more solid than cloud. But the tunnel seemed to go 
to an infinite distance. And yet there was a, a golden light at the end. And I was picking up this tremendous speed. Uh, my body was suspended back about 45 degrees. And I am just astonished at the speed that I'm going. I, I can't put a time on it, but it was very rapid. Suddenly I began to decelerate. I come upward and I'm standing and I'm facing and I still don't know whether to call it an entrance or an exit. I truly don't know. A portal maybe. It's covered in a, in a mist. And here is where the journey begins, truly begins. I had the sensation that the tunnel had closed behind me and I had no option but to go forward. It's covered in mist, but I can sense it's a, it's a doorway. And as you would stepping into someplace unfamiliar that you can't see, I put my right foot out and felt, and there was, although the, the, it was covered in mist, I could sense it was a flat surface. And then I brought the other foot out, and the instant my other foot stepped down, I became aware of something. I looked down, I looked down, the mist parts, and I'm standing on the most incredibly beautiful green grass you could ever imagine. I now know where the saying comes from, the grass is always greener on the other side. It comes from heaven because this grass just wasn't green. It had a light. Every blade of grass exuded a light, the most beautiful light I had ever seen. And as I took my first tentative steps on the ground of heaven, as I pressed forward, light rippled out from the front of my foot in all directions. With every step I took on that beautiful, heavenly lit grass, light. And I'm fascinated by it. Absolutely fascinated. And I look up, the mist parts even more. And it is as though a median line has been drawn in front of my vision. And to the right, there's this incredibly beautiful, beautiful field pasture, as though it were early morning, as though you had gotten up at five o'clock in the morning and you see the, 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 the mist hanging over the fields and here and there peeping out of this mist, beautiful colored flowers. The mist continued up into the sky. Now we as pilots call it ground effect. So there was this beautiful ground effect and I was stunned by the beauty and the light. And although the mist traveled upwards, there was there was a brightness behind the mist and you just, as you would see here on earth on an early morning, and you just know it's the beginning of another beautiful day. And then I turned and on the other side of this median line, that beautiful green grass that I saw turned from brilliant green to brown to scorched to black. And then the ground dropped off to my left in a deep chasm. I've walked in the Alps. A chasm is a vertical, deep, we would call it a canyon in North America, but it can't, comes down and it's very deep. And, it, and the walls of this were, were shiny, black like coal. And the, the contrast was so different that I leaned to the left and I looked down into this pit. And the instant I did, Suddenly I saw a dull red glow deep in this pit. At the same time, I heard something truly strange, as though two massive steel or iron doors that had not been opened for a long time were screeching open on hinges that protested greatly as they were forced open. The screeching of the gates of hell. And as I'm looking in morbid fascination at this dull red glow coming from behind those massive gates or doors, suddenly something began to emerge 
from those doors. And at the same time, I was assailed with the most horrific smell, uh, a, 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 a smell of decay, of, of, of things long dead, of things that should never see the light of day. And I was instantly filled with dread, dread. Because coming out of this entrance through those gates, those doors, was a creature beyond description. Its body seemed to be comprised of this roiling, rolling mass of black cloud, but it was denser than cloud. It was denser than a London fog. It, it had a form and yet it was shape-shifting. And the, the, the hair stands up on my neck as I tell you of this because it crept out and then slowly moved its head and peered up at me. Those hideous eyes burning like coals and then slowly but purposely, I saw emerging from the cloud that surrounded it, this long claw, and it was enormous. And slowly but surely, it began to climb its way up those rock, coal black rocks toward me. The sense of dread and doom and clammy coldness, a sense of of true evil preceded this presence. And I recoiled from it. And as I did, I noticed in my recoiling from looking into the pit, it picked up speed. It started to climb rapidly. And I realized it was coming for me, for me. And as I turned toward the light, look, we are creatures of God's spirit. And I, um, I, I automatically turn toward the light. I think we all do. And as I did, that thing reared up out of the pit and loomed above me. It was enormous in size. And I heard the most horrific thing. I heard in, within its body of roiling darkness came crying and screaming and voices as though you were staying in a room. You could hear people speaking, but they were muffled. But as it loomed above me, suddenly its face peered at me from the darkness. And what emerged from that was so insidious, so incredibly evil, so ugly, that I recoiled in my abject horror from this creature. What had I ever done to deserve this? What had I ever done? And yet here it was, making its way inexorably toward me. And then what really curled my, curdled my blood was to hear my name being called. My name, it knew me, it knew me. If a snake could speak, that's what it sounded like. Their voices had a hissing quality. And I began to hear my name being called. Jim, Jim, this is your time. Come, get in here. You belong with us. I was beyond terrified, beyond terrified, because as it lurched toward me, as it lurched toward me, I hear to this day from this enormous mouth, this hideous creature, I remember the sound of the saliva dripping from his jaws and slapping on the ground. It was horrendous, beyond anything that Hollywood could ever concoct. And in my terror, my abject terror, I turned toward the light for comfort. Remember I said earlier, there are six words and the prayers of my family that are responsible for where I am today. And the first three words I cried out in my truck for the life that I had led was, God forgive me. And now with this creature snarling above me, and as I turn my back to it, suddenly I have felt this talon or claw rake down my back. 
all the while hearing my name being called. It knew me. It knew me. And it was there in its pernicious pursuit of my soul. And I turned, and in desperation with that, and I could sense the heat of its breath on my neck. I could, I could feel the talon on my shoulder blades. I could, I could smell the, the, the aroma of death and decay. And in that moment of abject terror, I raised both hands to that light. And I cried out, God, God, help me, help me from someone who had never in his entire life called out to God for anything. I had no right, no right to call out, no right to expect anything. But in my desperation, in my absolute fear, I cried out, God, help me. The instant I did, the instant I did, in that beautiful mist, three points of light appeared like distant stars coming rapidly toward me. And as I trembled I con and felt the snarling of this creature behind me, I concentrated on those beautiful stars because I felt if I was being dragged into the darkness, never again would I see starlight. Never again would I see light of any kind and I concentrated with all my might. And suddenly, with, with a speed even faster than when I came through the tunnel, these three points of light began to take form. And I realized they had a form similar to mine. And I remember thinking this and trying to concentrate on the light to avoid the darkness behind. I remember thinking, are these angels? Are these angels? And yes, they were. They were. God had heard the cry of a man who had never in his entire life honored or believed in him and had sent three of his guardians to save me from the darkness. And concentrating on the beauty of these creatures as they formed and they came toward me, they came in at tremendous speed. And, and this beautiful, white light preceded them. And as that white light washed over me and went behind me and struck that darkness, that creature shrieked and screamed in pain and scrambled backwards like a rat running for its hole. Darkness and evil cannot exist in the light of God. It simply cannot live in the light of God. And if you have the Spirit of God in you, darkness cannot touch you. I learned the lessons of a lifetime in a split second. If you have God in your life, you can fear nothing. You can fear, you have no fear. You fear nothing because your spirit is part of God's spirit. And with the creature rolling down like a rat looking, running for a hole, I concentrated on these incredible beings coming toward me. I guess it's the pilot in me, but as they were coming in so rapidly, I was concerned they were going to overshoot the runway. <laughs> By now, they should have put on three notches of flap, throttled back, and eased on. Never fear. Angels know how to fly. I thought I did good landings. They did the most beautiful landing I've ever seen. They just glided in instantly, and suddenly coming across the ground, I couldn't see their feet, coming toward me, are three of the most magnificent beings you could ever possibly imagine. And now instead of the darkness and the stench of death and evil and decay, suddenly I'm overwhelmed by this incredible, beautiful light, this spirit, and it's coming toward me, and there's this beautiful scent of, of, of holiness, I guess, coming toward me. And, and, and I'm in awe, in awe. I mean, look, I've never studied God or the angels, but we've all gotten a Christmas card. I know what an angel should look like. I knew what wings were. And these beautiful creatures coming toward me. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the words do not exist. And I feel every time I tell you 
of this that I fail miserably to describe the beauty of God's angels. Truly I do, but I will do my best. Imagine if you will, imagine if you will, a being so filled with an inner light. And it wasn't, I, I used to call it a white light, but it, it's not a color. It's, I think, my co-author, Dr. Tom Gardner, put it best. It was a fullness of glory that I was seeing, but I was trying to interpret it as a color, but it was a fullness of glory. And as they're coming toward me, they're tall, they're really large, but this sense of gentleness and peace and love and that they were there to protect me, to keep the darkness from ever coming near me again. And so here I am watching these three magnificent creatures glide toward me. The first one, 10 feet tall. The second one, about 13 feet tall. And coming behind him, a massive angel who I later found out was a warrior angel who had come to do battle with the darkness. And the darkness had run in fear from the light of the warrior angels. It was the most exquisite, wonderful realization. My first realization that the promises of God are real. His angels protect us. His angels protect us. And as they glided toward me, I had this sense that never again would I ever fear anything. I I'm looking forward so much to describing the angels to you in detail. Have you ever wondered what heaven is truly like? Do you know someone who questions life after death? Now you can know the testimonies of people who experienced life after death. You will receive James D. Woodford's brand new powerful book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey. Through this book, you will read about his firsthand experience with heaven, angels, and the afterlife. Encounter the glories of heaven and the stunning reality of the unseen world. Understand what it's like to hug an angel. Encounter the chilling realities of hell and the sights, sounds, and sensations of heaven. Read and hear first-hand accounts about the awesome beauty of Jesus, full of overpowering love and compassion. Gain faith to believe God for your own healing as you understand that God has a body parts room in heaven where miracles are waiting to be accessed. Take a tour of God's heavenly library with volumes of books that contain the accounts of each person's life. Learn how your prayers are converted into visible fire and rivers that ascend to heaven. You can get a digital copy of James Woodford's book, Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, by clicking the link below or by going to sidroth.org slash heaven.